So in the previous video, where we looked at the idea of pressure being force per unit area, we also looked at a case where right now we have a fluid, maybe it's water, okay? And right now you will see that those water that come from the lowest part will travel the furthest, okay, compared to water coming from the highest hole. And I ask you to think about what are the actual forces in our P is equal to F over A equation. What is this force that causes the water to be pushed out from the surface? Okay, so in this video, we are going to talk about what this force is and then derive an equation for all air or liquid pressure. And so let's go. So let's imagine summers inside water is let's say hi my friend SpongeBob, or rather a random cube lah. He's gonna draw a smiley face here to humor myself. Okay, so what is exerting a pressure on our friend's head? Okay, so imagine this block, or I can move up and down one inside the water. All right. So let's say I take the height of this uh face of the cube to be h. Okay, now I want you to think about, let's say you are standing down here, okay, or you are on this point, maybe you are just here chilling under the sea, okay. What is pressing down on your head? There's that long column of water, right? Okay, so let me draw out that long column for you. Okay, something like that. I'm not very good at 3D drawing, lah, okay. So you can imagine that the water that is pressing down on my friend's head there's a water column. So there is the weight due to water, mg. So previously, right, what you did was you used the weight of a solid. But now you imagine that there's this entire water column pressing down on my friend's head. Okay. And you can now say that the pressure, but now this one oh, is due to water. So pressure, okay, let's assume this one here is water or any kind of a liquid. The density is rho. Okay, so pressure here is due to F over A, but it's also due to the weight of water divided by the area. If you're wondering which one is A, my friends, A is the area of our good old sponges hit. This one is your A, cross sectional area. Okay, but this pressure, right, is pressure of water. Ah. ah, so how do we find weight of water again? We will take mg over a. But remember density, right? Density is mass over volume. So from here, if I want to find mass, I will take volume times density. But also at the same time, if I think about volume, which is the volume of that water column, what is that water column? Ah? The volume is equal to, ah, yes, AH. Okay, the area multiplied by the height. So I'm going to put this uh, AH inside. AH times density. Now I'm just going to throw that in. All right. So in the end of the, in the end of the day, I will have pressure is equal to AH density times g over a. You see why it's very convenient? Your a and a cancels out. Oh miss, this means oh, whether my uh, object has large area or small area, it doesn't matter. It, you're right, it does not matter. Okay, so we have the pressure only dependent on h, h rho g or rho g, h is up to you, but this is water pressure. Okay, I just want to emphasize a lot of times, ah, this one is liquid pressure, but this one is due to water. So in this case, we will take the density of the water. Okay, so will they ask you to prove this? Yep, they have quite a few times in paper two or even in paper one. But we are always starting from the founding, the ancestor equation, ah, which is force per unit area. Okay, but right now the force here is due to mg. So if you use this to examine this picture, right, it kind of makes sense, right? Because the area is all the same. And even if the area is not the same, 
So let's say I change the question a bit. I replace the cylinder with this funnel shape like that. Okay, let me draw the funnel shape properly. I replace with all oh, this funnel shape. And then I put H1, H2, H3. The water jet will have the same pattern. Even if it's closely funneled this way. Okay. Like this. The water jet will have the same pattern. And this is because only H will affect the liquid pressure. All right? Only H will affect the liquid pressure. Another diagram to look at is this one. So if you look at this, wow, the strange, strange looking shape, don't worry. Same height, same pressure. So if you are here, or here, or here, or here, let's say I call this 1, 2, 3, and 4, the pressure at 1 will be equal to the pressure at 2, will be equal to the pressure at 3, will be equal to the pressure at 4. Because they are at the same depth. Okay, But if you're concerned about, like for example, a teacher, you see uh, this 3 got a lot of water. Leh, and then you see this 4, not a lot of water. Uh. You consider the water column here very small. Ayala, the water column here is very small, but the area is also small. So if the water column is small, but the area is also small, then, you know, pressure is force per unit area. This one becomes small, this one becomes small. Then how? Like? So it's not as simple as seeing whether you have a lot of water acting on you or you have very little water acting on you. Because if you have more water acting on you, you also have a larger area. Right? Does that make sense? Okay. So it's not as straightforward as uh, looking at the shape. But if you understand the equation and how the effect of area sort of cancels out between the weight and the cross-sectional area, then the only thing that affects your fluid pressure is your height or how much, how deep you went diving into the water. All right. So I would like to then move on in the theory part, okay, to talk about, let's say, for example, how do we graph this relationship? Okay, so let's say I want to draw a graph of uh, pressure against H. PH, public holiday, which is we all need. I need a holiday. Okay, anyway, pressure in Pascal, height maybe in meter. So this height huh, is actually what I call depth. Depth measured from the surface. Ah. Nah, nah, nah. This height, ah, this height, measure like that. This is the depth measured from the surface okay so to help you maybe i change this one to h all right so now we can see that you see p and h directly proportional or yellow directly proportional so we're going to get something that we are pretty familiar which is a straight line passing through the origin no problem okay now what happens if let's say i change h why you do that? Why you objective what? Okay, so now you need to think a bit. Hmm, I don't always measure H from the surface. Sometimes I can measure H from the bottom. GG. What you mean? Uh, I can measure H from here. Maybe I call this one. I also don't know what to call this. Maybe I'll call this X. Okay, we measure from the base. So what, how do you think the PX graph will look like? So to do this, I mean, you could obviously derive an equation, but hey, no need to. It's okay. You can big brain this. Let's say now we measure pressure in Pascal against X, the distance from the bottom of the cylinder. Right? This X is a different X. Okay? So this graph, what this will look like is... Uh, when your x is zero, the pressure is the highest. Make sense? Because you are at the lowest point, the deepest possible position. X zero. Ah, and then as your x become bigger, you will float up. Your pressure drop. No? So your graph will look like this. So this point here is at the surface. Surface, surface of your liquid. So different 
uh, different scenario, different graph. Please don't get so attached. Learn to read the question and interpret where they are measuring the distance from. Is it from the bottom or is it from the top? Okay. The next idea that I want you to think about is we don't sit in vacuum, right? So you're thinking, teacher, on top of this open, open beaker of water, there is atmosphere. Ah, correct, lah. Your good friend, ah, the atmosphere. The atmosphere will also exert a pressure on the whole system. Unless you seal the system, you cannot avoid atmosphere. Atmosphere is everywhere right now on you, on all of you is atmosphere. So if we, that's why I specify this one as pressure of water alone, because there's also atmospheric pressure down here, P-A-T-A. Wow, teacher, then what is the actual total pressure? So the total pressure, if we want to have like an absolute value, is equal to atmospheric pressure plus water pressure. Oh, teacher, what's the atmospheric pressure? Well, we can measure it lah. But before we talk about measuring it, we should have done so before in your high school. The atmospheric pressure is quite large, right? About 1 times 10, 1.01 1 .01 times 10 to the power of 5. Don't worry, if they want you to use it, you will have to use it, okay? But it's also equivalent to 10 meters of water. So it is equivalent to being under 10 meters of water. Of course, if you want to find the absolute pressure, you can put 10 meter into this equation H, density of water, multiplied by G. 10 times 1000 times 10 is around 10 to the power of 5. Okay, so by estimate, you can tell this is actually quite accurate. But how would the total pressure graph then look like? It won't look like this, right? Let's say now I measure from the bottom. My entire graph will look like this. So this is P total. This is still, I mean, the easiest way to think to start measuring is actually from the bottom because your pressure is maximum at the bottom. So what you would probably get is something, still a straight line like this until here, where this uh, is your atmospheric pressure, this point, okay? Because when you're at the surface of the water, you will have that pressure. Does that make sense? So learn to interpret the scenario, okay? And also understand that, uh, let's say, for example, you want to continue. Lah. Maybe I lift this block out of the water and I continue to lift it up. Then what happens to the pressure? The pre and let's say I continue to throw it higher and higher up the atmosphere, far, far away, float, float very high. Teacher, the density of the at yes, the density of the atmosphere will change. So this equation, right, that I have right here, this one can use for both air and liquid. Because air is a type of fluid. They are both they both flow. This is hydrostatic of static fluid pressure. So if you continue, you wish the pressure of the atmosphere. Then uh, if we continue to measure or go higher, lift the beaker and continue to go higher and higher, then this graph will look a bit like this. Okay, let's say your x can increase some more. Your pressure will eventually drop to zero. But because of the... I very hard to decide for you how this shape will look like. Okay? So you need to read the question. And CIE also never specify. Right? But uh, I guess what I could do is I could draw something like this because um, the most accurate drawing would be a decrease that is like this. Okay, so it's like a decreasing gradient, kind of gradually over time. So this point here is outer space. Lah. Okay, and if you're wondering why is it a curve, it's because P is equal to H rho G. Okay, so as you travel away from the surface, 
two things will happen. The air column's height will decrease. H decrease. Also at the same time, the density of the air also decrease, right? You go higher, the air is thinner. There is less air particles per unit volume. Density decrease. So the drop is actually some form of square. Yeah. All right. But sometimes if you look at average, it can be a straight line. So read the question. What, whatever curve you zoom in enough, it will be a straight line. So it depends on scale. If I go all the way to outer space, this, this scale is also a bit cha -cha -la because the... Okay, let me try to make the scale a bit better. Scale a bit cha cha means my beaker cannot be almost as tall as the atmosphere. That makes no sense. So let's say this is a beaker, a bit wee beaker. Okay, so this one is atmospheric pressure. This is at the surface of the water. This is PATM. Water surface. Okay, and then after that, it will. Mm. Yeah, so you expect a quick decrease as you go up. But as usual, if we zoom in on this side, oh, it will look like a straight line. Right? So please read the question. Every objective question is different. They make different assumptions. Some assume density of atmosphere is constant. There will be a straight line. Some assume density of constant decrease, but we take average. Some assume density will decrease linearly. You, you read the question. <laughs> okay, you read the question and you interpret it accordingly. But this is assuming that density decreased linearly and height also decreased. Okay, so again, uh, this here, when x is 0, is at the bottom, bottom of the water. And then as you go higher and higher, the pressure will drop linearly. Here is at the surface, the red color atmospheric pressure. Because everybody, you have atmosphere. You have atmosphere. Everybody have atmosphere. You are exposed to atmosphere. So once we travel away from the surface of the earth, what will happen is the pressure will begin to drop. For two reasons. There's less air pressing down on you because you're higher. And the air is also thinner as you go higher. So you get a curve. All right. So this part is pretty important as well. So go try some questions around this. Okay, and in the next video, okay, I'm going to talk about how to measure this pressure. This is just a brief recap from your form 4 slash year 10 slash high school. I'll see you in those videos. Go, go try some questions. Bye.